Welcome to Emmanuel United Church here in Ottawa, Canada on the 11th day of September. Good to have all of you here with us in the sanctuary, the choir back, and all of you who are joining us uh, by live streaming and throughout the last two and a half years by live streaming from uh, across the city, the country, and a few of you overseas. Good to have all of you joining us. As we meet together, we begin by remembering the Algonquin people on whose traditional land we now gather in gratitude. We acknowledge their story and their stewardship of the land and the water, the plants and the animals through many generations. And we bear witness to the ongoing suffering caused by historical injustices. And we commit to seeking right relations today. Thank you so much. And thank you to our, as always, to our production team, our ushers today, our lay reader, our coffee hosts, our musicians. Thank you everyone for your wonderful contributions to this service of worship today. Uh, just a reminder that this coming Wednesday is the last of the Wednesday evening worship in the garden and it will be at a new time, 6.30. 6.30, and Jim Lamb, I don't know if you know this, Jim, but you're doing the music. <laughs> the September Life and Work Packet are available. A number of things are starting this week, so please check the calendar 
which is in the service bulletin today because things like Take Time to Holy starts tomorrow. I see Book Club is meeting, uh, Bridge, uh, Finance Committee, Bells, Al-Anon Choir, etc. And the Heretics are starting this week as well. Uh, their usual 10 a.m. on Zoom. So please join in the activities that you would like to. And I think you're back on Tuesday, Roxanne? Yes, on Zoom. Yeah, okay, so come and join Roxanne as well. Um, remember, uh, this is me saying, remember to wear your name tag next week for, for Grant. I was telling, I, I've forgotten who, uh, people, that's a hard thing when you first come is to remember people. But when I was in Brandon, there were a couple wore, like it was suit and tie days, right? Back in 19 whatever. And, but they wore those Hawaiian shirts, like orange and reds. I never forgot their names, ever. <laughs> like ever. If you wear white shirts, all of you, glasses and gray hair, he's, <laughs> he's in trouble. <laughs> And I was thinking about farewells as well. Like the last week I told you about one that surprised me. One that I'll never forget was I was at Bell's Corners. It was the last Sunday of June. We were thanking as we usually did the Sunday school teachers for having taught for a whole year. And in those days there were tons of kids in Sunday school and it was a tough job, let me tell you, in those days. And the Christian development chair, she, I think rightly thought she would just stop at her local depanure because they always had baskets of flowers, pick up a whole bunch of flowers and every teacher would get some flowers. Well, son of a gun, they had no flowers that morning and the only thing they had in the right quantity was avocados. <laughs> and I will never forget these going down the line, shaking hands and she was ahead of me giving them each an avocado for having taught. And they're like, an avocado for having time? <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Nothing ever like that. Remembering me, I won't, you won't remember my name, but you'll remember the guy with the puppets. <laughs> so thank you. I think Robert suggested putting them out. I, we did, Robert. And you may forget some of their names. I forget some of their names every so often. <laughs> <clears throat> but there you go. They're here too. So welcome to them. And Graham has an announcement today. Graham. Thank you, Brian. And honestly, I feel like I've been scooped this morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. To those here in the sanctuary and to those participating in the online service as well. This is indeed a special day for Emmanuel. First, we've gathered for worship this morning on Brian and Sandra's last Sunday with us. We look forward to being part of the worship service with you this morning, Brian. Second, we'll be bidding farewell to Brian and Sandra after their ministry with us for almost three years. We'll mark the farewell by presenting our thanks and best wishes in a short program immediately following the service today. You will hear testimonials from members of the congregation, and we will be presenting them with gifts to help them remember Emmanuel Bai. None of the gifts are avocados. <laughs> so everyone is invited to remain here in the sanctuary and to remain online, please, after the worship service today. Completing the farewell, there will be coffee and conversation served with cake at Brian's request in the CE Hall. We hope all of you can join us then. Thank you. Thank you so much. And friends, this morning we light the Christ candle and our affirming candle. Welcome. Welcome to this sacred place of belonging where, where we embrace the sacredness of life and recognize the dignity 
of each person, spirit-filled with the image of God, the mystery in whom we live and move and have our being. Welcome to all who have no church home, need strength, want to follow Christ, have doubts. Welcome to visitors and to new and old friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, youth, couples, and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, cultures, abilities, gender identities, and sexual orientations, to old and young, to believers and questioners, and welcome to questioner believers. This day, we are all invited to live into God's love, peace, and justice. Our opening hymn this morning is from Voices United 412, This is the Day. Please join me in the call to worship, followed by the prayer of approach. The Alpha and Omega call us to new beginnings. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, you welcome us into your realm, and you give us your mission to fulfill. Thank you for your wisdom and the Spirit's guidance, which has led us to this place and time. Now we pray, send us onwards with gratitude and hope that we may continue to serve you wherever you call, wherever we are sent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, and now we'll have the children's story told by Myrna. Hi, I'm really glad to be here with you today. 
I hope you've had a wonderful summer. We certainly have had great weather for playing outdoors. I'm sure you've had plenty of time to be with your friends and with family. But now it's September and school's about to start. Perhaps some of you have already said goodbye to an older brother and sister who are off to university. Perhaps your school started earlier in the week. But there are some of you who have either just moved here or are changing schools, or perhaps you've never been to school before. It's your first time going to school, and maybe you're just a wee bit anxious about it. Well, today's story is about Splat the Cat, and it's his very first day of going to school, and Splat is feeling a little bit anxious too. He's wondering, what will it be like? Am I going to like my teacher? Is my teacher going to like me? Will I make friends? And what's school all about? Well, let's find out what Splat found out. I hope you can see this page. It was early in the morning and Splat was wide awake. Today was his very first day at cat school and his tail wiggled wildly with worry. Here's Splat and besides Splat is his best friend Seymour, the mouse. Splat thought, hmm, if I hide from the day, maybe it'll go away, he thought. Nope, it didn't go away. It's time to get up, said his mom. It's time to get dressed, said his mom. M -m mom, I, I don't have any clean socks. <laughs> Well, maybe I should go to school tomorrow instead, hmm, said Splat. And his mom said, oh, Splat, you don't wear any socks. M mom, I'm having a really bad hair day. M maybe I should go to school tomorrow, Splat said. His mom combed his hair on both sides. Perfect, she said. Don't forget your lunchbox, said his mom. I'll, I'll need a friend today, thought Splat, so he packed his good friend Seymour into the lunchbox. It's time to go, said his mom. But mom, the front door, it won't let me out. Oh, ma ma mom, the, the gate, the go gate won't let go of my fingers. Oh, Mom, the lamppost. It just won't get out of my way, Mom. M -m Mom? You can ride your bike if you like, said his Mom. And so he did. But Splat didn't say a single word. He was looking pretty scared. Welcome to cat school, said a big round cat. I'm Mrs. Wimpy Dimple, your teacher. Splat's mom gave him a big hug. I'll be back soon, she said. You'll be fine. Everyone, this is Splat, said Mrs. Wimpy Dimple. Let's welcome him into our class. Everyone said, hi, Splat. Good to see you. And look at all these happy faces. They don't look scary at all, do they? Mrs. Wimpy Dimple began. Cats are amazing, she said. We're clever, we're cunning, and we're very quick. Splat put up his hand and said, Am I amazing too? Yes, you too, said Mrs. Wimpy Dimple. Cats climb trees, they drink milk, and they chase mice, said Mrs. Wimpy Dimple. Now, Splat thought about this because he was remembering 
his good friend Seymour. And he said, Hmm, why do we chase mice, Mrs. Wimpy Dimple? Well, it's what we do, she said. But why, asked Splat? Because. Well, Splat still didn't get it. And he said, hmm, why? Mrs. Wimpy Dimple sighed. Oh, it's time for lunch, she, says, she announced. She o Splat opened his lunchbox, and guess who popped up? It was Seymour. Mouse, cried the other cats. The cats did what cats do. They chased poor Seymour. Seymour hid behind a glass bottle, and it made his face look big and scary. And when the cats saw his face through the glass, they screamed, and ran away. And Seymour did what all mice wanted to do. He was able to scare the cats. Stop, cried Splat. Splat. The cats didn't stop. Enough, said Mrs. Wimpy Dimple, and it ended. It's milk time. Hooray, called the cats. But the door to the milk cupboard was stuck. Oh dear, no milk today announced Mrs. Wimpy Dimple. Aww! So Splat whispered into Seymour's ear. <laughs> Seymour scooted into a little mouse hole and came up the other side of the door, and he was able to open the door. A moment later, the door swung open, and the cats went, oh, Yum! Milk! Mmm! Mrs. Wimpy Dimple wrote on the board, S Cats don't chase mice. Hooray, cheered the cats. Soon it was home time, and Splat's mum returned and gave him a big hug. Guess what, mum? I've got lots of friends, and cats don't chase mice. And best of all, Mom, guess what? I'm amazing. It was early the next morning, and Splat was wide awake. So was Seymour. And today, it was his second day at cat school, and his tail wiggled wildly with excitement. I hope you enjoyed the story about Splat and Seymour going to school for the first time. As anxious as Splat was going to school, he found out that it wasn't a place to feel intimidated or shy. It's a place where you make new friends and get along really well. Good to see you. Maybe next time. Bye. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much, Myrna. That, that was <laughs> extremely meaningful, and we realized that it takes at least one or two or four readings of the book in order to be able to do it like that. So thank you very much. Uh, our next hymn is from More Voices 161, I Have Called You By Your Name.
And now uh, we listen to God's word. Our scripture reading this morning is from Phil Philippians 4, verses 15 to 23. You Philippians indeed know that it is the early days of the gospel. When I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you alone. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs more than once. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit that accumulates to your account. I have been paid in full and have more than enough. I am fully satisfied. And now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The friends who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you especially those of the emperor's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church.
Thank you so much. When I hear you sing, I'm reminded you are one of the great church choirs in this town. <laughs> Worth the price of admission. <laughs> Friends, shall we pray? Our loving God, we thank you for your bounteous gifts and that like Paul, throughout our journeys, you are with us. Sustain us this day and in each new day, we ask in Jesus' name, who walks with us always. Amen. The toughest year financially at university was really, I think, my first year in theology. By then, the economy was such that summer jobs really only paid for tuition and not a whole lot more. So when the university chaplain called me one day and said that the IODE, the International Order of the Daughters of the Empire, had a bursary for theological students, and I was the recipient, I was elated. I moved up from bologna to ground beef. <laughs> Paul was a tent maker who needed funding from the Christian communities in order to make his ministry to the Gentiles a go. And as any finance committee can appreciate, this was a difficult task. But the church at Philippi stood out. Because when Paul was most in need of money, one congregation came through for him, the Philippians. And later on, when the situation arose again, one congregation came through for him, the Philippians. And Paul never forgot their generosity and their readiness to help him in, their time, in his time of need. And thinking about it, I think Emmanuel would be that, is that kind of congregation that would have stood up alone as the one to support an itinerant missionary. Paul's farewell paragraphs, if you read them, which I did this week, and many of his letters are full of instructions, full of commendations, usually full of advice on how to get along with each other. But the letter to the Philippians stood out because in these last words, he is above all else grateful, grateful to them for his care of him, for their generosity, for their readiness to help when he was down to his last coin. And like Paul, I can only say to you, thank you in my final sermon for your kindness, for the wonderful welcome, which was so generous, for the support you've offered me and Sandra over these three years, Stopping by my office door, your emails, your notes, your gratitude has really been an exceptional gift, which we will always cherish. And looking back, this was really a pandemic ministry. Thankfully, and I really say this, thankfully, I had four and a half months before it struck to get to know you, but March of 2020 began what was and is the most unusual time any of us have had in the life of the modern church. And I think the strength of Emmanuel really shone through in this unknown landscape. Someone just last week reminded me of how much David Ray's Thursday missives kept us going. Roxanne adapted her ministry and started a new coffee and study group online. The CD committee tried many ways of reaching out. And Russ, thank you for leading us in live streaming. We've had so many programs at Emmanuel that you may not know we had to buy two Zoom channels to handle the need. I noticed of late, perhaps many other congregations simply stopped offering programming outside of Sunday worship, and many still haven't gotten re-engaged. The choices that we offered people here were abundant throughout the pandemic. The life of a church congregation has changed radically in the last 30 months, more than ever before. And many <clears throat> are just trying to figure out how do we survive? But I think, and maybe this was unconscious, the goal at Emmanuel that I heard throughout was put this way, how in the midst of this can we thrive? And in thriving in this difficult environment we have by the grace of God. 
Now, like Paul, there were ups and downs in the last three years. I think for me, one of the low moments was just last Easter of 2021 when we had everything prepped and then another huge wave of the virus came through. And at that last week, we had to cancel all those in-person Easter services. But a highlight was Wednesday evening worship in July of 2021. So many of you came to the Botsford Gardens and we had incredible weather that first year, just unbelievably good. And to see people in person, that was just wonderful. And there was just such a joy and a spirit in meeting outside and actually seeing people and being with others. It was wonderful. And Paul, if you read the letters, had these up and down experiences with all of the congregations he served, including the Philippians. And to them, his final word is one of gratitude and of thanksgiving, to the point that he says to them, don't give me any more, because you have blessed me so richly. I have all that I need, and even more. Woodruff United was one of the congregations I served that had a much, and I'm being kind here, older demographic. And what I learned there was how many transitions we have to navigate as we age. Leaving our house, moving to an apartment or retirement home, moving in with our children, leaving town to be near our children or going to a new town, in and out of hospital, countless transitions. And ministry really is one long transition whether you stay for just three years or 30 years, we're all in actuality interim ministers. And Paul knew that he was an itinerant preacher moving from place to place to proclaim the gospel of Jesus. And along the way, as you read, he put out a few fires, he found some conflicts that even he couldn't resolve, but he ended his time with this deep sense of gratitude for his call from Jesus and for his congregations. Years ago, the Alban Institute put out a little pamphlet about how to leave your congregation where you had been called as the minister. And one image that they painted that stayed with me were keys. Keys, they said, are a sign of our transitions. And indeed, today, my last official act will be to leave my keys on Pat's desk and then to get a new set of keys at Trinity. The change of keys is surely a sign that again I'm in the midst of transition, as are you. And I trust and I pray that it will be one of a great joy and of blessings that will last you for many years to come. And so like Paul, I echo his gratitude. I have been paid in full and have more than enough. You have given Sandra and I all that we could have asked for and more in these last three years, and truly we shall remain forever grateful for this opportunity to have shared this time with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. And friends, if you would join me in a moment of quiet reflection this morning and of prayer, shall we pray? Loving God, in our quiet moments, we give you thanks for all the blessings, the abundance which you have given to us in all of our days. And we come to you now to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and offer. Amen. And our hymn is number 639 in Voices United, One More Step Along the Way I Go.
seated. This morning in Thanksgiving, we offer into this plate our gratitude for the bounty of the earth, for the labor of our hands, and for the loyalty of our hearts. We offer in service to God that it may be transformed and we may be changed to become servants of Christ wherever we are placed. In Jesus' name we offer and give thanks. Amen. I chose for our minute for mission this morning something from Advent of 2020 because in so many ways, in addition to the puppets and many other different avenues, Richard Bott, who is our now past moderator, was really our companion along the way. And I heard so many of you say how much Richard's messages had helped you personally in the pandemic. And so we go back to Advent of 2020 and Richard's, our moderator's message that day. Hello, my name is Richard Bott. I'm the moderator of the United Church of Canada. At the moment, I am preparing to move from one home to another. Yes, in the midst of a pandemic. Why? Because it's necessary. I have no choice. It's difficult. I want to do all the things now. All the things at the same time. All the things. Wash the walls, paint the walls, buy the boxes, fill them up. Transfer my internet connection. Give things away. Recycle things. Throw other things away. Right. Find a place to live. I want to do all the things at the same time. Right now. But it's impossible. You see, this is my reaction to stress. I try to do all the things at the same time. And when I can't, I freeze. I get stuck. But listen. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. These are the words of Koholeth in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 8. The Advent season is not just a time of waiting. It's a time of preparation. When we prepare for a baby coming, like Jesus. For a move, like mine. We have to remember that there are important things and less important things. And we have to remember that there is a time for everything in its order. 
There are times when we need to take a moment to discern that order with God before we're able to act. We have to move one step at a time, without fear, without worry. Because God is here. God is with us. God is with all of this wounded world. That's the Christmas message, isn't it? In good times and bad, in life, in death, and in life beyond death, God is with us. Advent, especially this Advent, can be a time for us to stop and remember that. Advent and Christmas will be different this year from any other most of us have known. We will need to limit our movements, to keep our physical distance, to cover our faces. None of these things make our celebrations easier, but they are necessary for our health and the life of our neighbors. Perhaps the distance this pandemic brings can allow us to prepare our spiritual life, our interior life, for the coming of the Christ child. One step at a time, each in its order. May the peace of Christ be with you now and every day to come. His message is really where for every season. Friends, shall we come together in a spirit and a time of prayer? Loving God, we come to you this morning giving thanks for this community of faith of which we are a part and for all the ways in which it enriches our life and gives us hope. We thank you today for the gardens in the autumn and for the beauty of the world that you have created. And this morning we thank you for the pastoral care team and for communion with seniors and for all caregivers. Thank you for their love. Holy One, we lift up to you this morning the members of the royal family, all those grieving the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, that they may know in this time of uncertainty that you walk with them. And we pray for all the candidates who have offered themselves in our municipal elections, the mayor, the councillors, school boards, and for the tasks which they are prepared to take on on our behalf. Guide them, we pray, O God. Holy One, we lift up to you those who are still struggling with COVID this morning and those who are still living with the effects of COVID. That your healing grace and presence may sustain and uphold them. And for family and friends who are struggling with chronic pain and suffering, which seems unremitting in their life, we pray for peace, for a moment of freedom, and for the trust that you will embrace them always. We remember and lift up to you those who in our community who are homeless, who need safe shelter, a regular place to call home. Walk with them in this struggle, we pray, O oh God. Holy One, we also offer to you those who have returned to school, our children, parents, grandparents, teachers, administrators, all who are anxious, that you may bring them calm and certainty, that you are their rock and hope. And Holy One, for those who this month are retiring, that you would bless them in this change. Those who are changing positions, those who are returning to their workplace again after these years, may your grace sustain them, we ask. And this morning we remember especially the people of James Smith Cree Nation in their time of great 
in unimaginable loss and tragedy. Hold them, we pray, forever. And for the people of Pakistan, struggling just to survive after such devastating floods, may the whole world reach out to them in this their great time of need. And now we offer into your hands those who were in our hearts and on our minds as we came into this sacred time and place. Hear our prayers for them. And in your love, answer, we ask in Jesus' name, who, when he fashioned you as a loving parent, taught us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as we go forth to serve God faithfully in the world, our hymn is from Voices United 236. Now thank we all our God. go to fulfill your high calling as servants of Jesus Christ. Go with a daring and a tender love. The world is waiting. And now may the grace of Christ attend each one of you, 
May the love of God embrace you, and may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide and keep you this day and forever. Amen. Friend, you may.